This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1966 Chevelle Station Wagon model. It's a 125 scale kit from Ravel, number 85-4054. It's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builder. Contains 125 parts molded in white, clear, chrome with vinyl tires. And it's a re release of the California Wheels version, and as with previous versions, the stock parts are missing. This is a custom only build, and the motor is nicely detailed. It's a big 396 uh, big block as seen in the 65 SS kits. The chassis is molded in multiple parts, and it's well detailed. Four-wheel disc brakes and oversized tires are the only options. No stock parts are supplied. The interior is nicely detailed and has dash details and seat details as decals. The door panel detail is crisp too and the body is a one-piece unit with a separate hood. It's straight and well-defined and only has the SS options that were not offered on wagons. The chrome trim is not molded onto the body and it's applied as an add-on which is a nice plus for detailing. There's a few mold lines and they're light and easy to remove. Ravel fills a muscle car void with this kit but it'd be nice to have some stock stuff. Nonetheless, when you're done, it's what you'd do with Grandpa's station wagon if you got that handed to you. Finish dimensions are about 7.8 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2.5 inches high. Here are the contents of this kit, and as you can see, all the parts came out of the box. Yes, we opened it up, and this is your open box review, my style. I could pick up each piece and tell you what each one is about, if I could find the words, but that won't help you get the kit built. So we're going to do that, but as you should know, we're going to use Model Master clear cement, and occasionally super glue with maybe some white glue or clear glue for the window parts. And please remember to follow the manufacturer safety guidelines when using any of the products you see used here in the review for your own protection. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, the color is nice and the registry is good. I also recommend that you use some of the aftermarket decal setting solutions to make sure those big woody decals settle into the contours of the body and stick well. We're going to start with the engine and here are the parts you'll need to build that. The instruction sheet has you build the car where you're attaching the chassis to the interior uh, and in an earlier s segment. So we're going to wait till the last possible part to avoid paint damage in order to do that. This is a nicely detailed motor and we're going to paint uh, it after we get the block assembled uh, so that it um, looks more detailed. Now um, glue the two block halves together add the heads to the top and then the intake to the top between the heads then the oil pan on the bottom. Now paint the motor assembly orange with a silver transmission and paint the carb gold colored and the starter is black with a gold solenoid then paint the water pump steel and the oil filter blue. Paint the exhaust a steel color and the fuel pump is silver. Now paint the fan belts flat black with a silver alternator gear and paint the fan black with a fan clutch aluminum. Paint the alternator silver and then the coil black and paint the distributor cap a tan color with a steel base. Now paint the air snorkel black. Now on the other side uh, you can assemble the uh, carb to the intake and add the valve covers to the heads and then on the left valve cover add decal number 17 and on the left side add the starter to the transmission back. Now add the water pump to the front of the motor and add the oil filter to the right side. Then the distributor goes at the back of the intake. Add the coil beside the distributor and attach the air cleaner lid to the snorkel and add that to the carb. Then attach decal 16 to the top of the air cleaner lid. Add the fuel pump to the left front side of the motor and then the exhaust on to the heads. Then add the fan belt to the and the alternator to the back uh, and then the fan to the front with the uh, fan clutch. Then attach that to the front of the motor. Get the uh, tires and wheels out of the kit and then uh, on 
they're directional as you can see so take a look here where it shows the tread direction you have to be careful when installing the rims and uh, putting them into the suspension so the tread should run forward uh, with the V point touching first uh, when it hits the ground and the tread should you know the rim will face out to give the tires a road worn look I pressed and rolled the tread onto some 220 sandpaper uh, to give it that um, you know feel of a real used tire so uh, I decided to paint the intersection body color for that custom look and uh, since I painted the center of the rims I did the wheel studs in steel and this is an optional idea uh, you can uh, choose to just leave them chrome uh, but insert the rim backs uh, into the back of the tire then glue the rim fronts to the rim backs uh, from the front of the tire and remember that they are directional so take care to line up the rims uh, so that the front and the back spokes are aligned and you can choose between a Chevy logo cap decal or American racing cap decals then attach your choice as the center cap I'll gather these parts for the chassis and this subassembly gets done in two steps the front suspension and the motor and then the rear suspension the point is to simplify the build and do as much work as possible prior to assembly of the body taking a look at the chassis there are mold markings and trademark scripts that need to be removed so um, the right rear chassis pan has Revell trademarks and uh, it shows the area of the rear suspension valley that has the GM trademarks so remove uh, the type there uh, by shaving it off with a razor or a hobby blade and then sand the area smooth now we're going to do a little detailing and on the chassis pan paint the whole thing flat black and then paint the frame rails on the underside semi-gloss black along with the uh, aluminum gas tank then the upper A arms are, are semi-gloss black as well as the spare tire uh, being flat black now paint the exhaust pipe steel and s with silver mufflers and on the front suspension uh, the A arms are semi-gloss black and the frame support is uh, flat black as well as the tie rods and the stabilizer bar is steel colored now assemble the rear suspension differential cover and lower link bars and paint that unit uh, semi-gloss black then the four springs coil springs are flat black with steel coils so you, you just highlight the coils on the outside there and then paint the drive shaft gray and the shocks yellow now the rear stabilizer is steel on the brakes you can paint the calipers gold black red whatever you like and then uh, install decals 29 and 30 to the brake disc faces so here's a look at the uh, finished front suspension and it gets very detailed and colorful uh, in this configuration so attach the upper A arms to the frame top side and on the front suspension slide the brakes into place over the kingpin then the directions show installing the calipers to the front uh, but I place those to the rear um, so make sure uh, to check the tire rotation and install a tire onto each kingpin they uh, snap right on then attach the two small springs to the front uh, frame front and attach the suspension unit into place on those now here's the rear suspension with the exhaust in placed uh, and as it's dried you can slide the drive shaft into the transmission so on the rear suspension unit slide the brakes into place over the pin with the calipers to the front and make sure to check that tire rotation and install a tire on each pin and they snap right on there too so attach the long springs to the rear suspension unit and slide that into place now put the drive shaft into the differential and glue the suspension into the frame now attach the shocks to the pins on the rear suspension and they go into the notches in the frame now you can install the uh, motor into the chassis on the mounts there so um, also make sure that you scrape any paint off of your gluing and contact points to make sure you get good adhesion and you'll need to flip the chassis over uh, when the motor is set and dried in place uh, uh, to attach and attach the exhaust so with the exhaust in place uh, attached to the uh, manifolds there uh, exhaust manifolds and out the back you can see that your uh, chassis has come to life now you're um, at the point in your build where you have a rolling chassis so you can uh, set that back uh, on its wheels 
and uh, set that aside uh, for later. Now pick these parts out of the kit to assemble the interior. So prior to painting we're going to uh, subassemble some of this to make it easier to paint and hide some joint lines. So assemble the front seat and the seat back and then assemble the rear seat and seat back. Now uh, put the dash in and the dash top and then uh, interior color is your option uh, whatever you like. I used uh, white with white and black and then on the floor pan paint the underside flat black as it shows through the chassis openings and paint the floor pan top your interior color and then the mat in the rear is usually flat black or a darker shade of the interior color so paint the seats door panels, rear panel, and the dash interior color, and paint the shifter boot and knob black. The steering column is interior color, and the steering wheel spokes are interior color with uh, a brown steering wheel. Now the indicator stock is silver, and seat decals are optional. Decal 8 goes on uh, the rear seat back, and 9 goes on the rear seat base, and 6 on the front seat back, and 7 on the front seat base. Now part number 14 is not on the instructions but it's a tachometer and if you use it paint that silver. So here's what the uh, door panel looks like and as you can see it's pretty detailed. Um, you can paint the uh, handle silver, the window crank, trim strip at the top of the panel um, and at the middle of the panel and the bottom of the panel uh, are all silver so you can also use the optional decals uh, they go on the door kick panels and uh, five goes in the center trim strip. So uh, locate the dash and um, uh, we're going to give you a, a map here, a decal map, so that you can see uh, where the decals are placed. So, But paint the uh, strip at the top of the dash inside flat black with silver knobs and the instrument panel is flat black with decal number one. The radio panel uh, is the interior color with the decal two and uh, the black knobs. So the face panel is flat black with a silver lock and a nameplate and the uh, top panel and the center panels have some silver trim around them. And decal 3 is the AC controls so paint the pedals black with silver arms. So here's what your completed uh, uh, interior will look like. So attach the rear seat into place and the front seat and then uh, add the shifter into place and attach the door panels to the assembly and attach the rear panel to the side panels. On the dash if you use the tack and install it where you see fit as that is optional and attach the steering wheel to the column and on the wheel attach the horn ring using decal number four in the horn center. Uh, now attach that assembly to the dash and install the dash into the door panel slots. Now this completes the interior uh, subassembly so you can set that aside to dry. Get these body parts out, they'll need to be painted, so attach the hood hinges to the hood before painting. Uh, and then there's a few things that need attention before you can uh, paint the body. The body and the hood need to be completely wet sanded with um, 800 to 1000 grit sandpaper before primer and then again before color. This is the, uh, the uh, rear door emblem, so you can sand that off uh, because you'll replace it with a decal. and then. Uh, this other um, photo here shows uh, the mold line on the rear roof pillar that's on both sides. So you'll want to uh, sand that smooth and look the entire body over for any mold lines that need to be removed. There's also a, a Malibu script on the rear corner so uh, that gets replaced with a decal so you can remove those for a nice flat surface. And then uh, you can um, remove the door locks off the front doors too. You replace those with decals as well. Now tape the hood into place and spray the entire body inside and out with a, a nice etching primer and then look for any blemishes that you need to address before you uh, add your paint color. It looks good standing there and uh, the mold lines really uh, didn't show up so just sand her with a nice smooth wet sand, uh, let her dry and then we'll get to the finish paint. So once dry go ahead and uh, use some light mist coats to get a tack coat onto your uh, exterior and then uh, followed by a couple of heavier coats and finally a nice wet coat or two for a good depth and uh, I used just a standard blue uh, metallic for my color so you pick your color and uh, go ahead and spray that on now. 
use plenty of warm water to remove the uh, decal from its backing and after about 30 seconds it should start to float off make sure it's got some glue on the back side and again use uh, plenty of warm water to uh, put the large decal onto the body side of the uh, sh uh, station wagon here uh, and then once it's in position squeeze out any trapped air bubbles and water and then uh, use some of that decal setting solution to make sure it nestles into any of the contours uh, as this was a, a 1966 model, it had plenty of chrome trim, uh, so I used some foil for that. You just kind of cut off strips to apply it to where the uh, uh, foil trim is on your car, and then you just stick it down and burnish it on, and then trim off any excess with a real sharp hobby knife. Once uh, you've got your um, trim highlighted there in foil, it's time to give your car a clear coat spray uh, in order to uh, lock in the decals and the uh, foil trim. So get these parts out for the next uh, assembly step uh, and as it's a station wagon there's plenty of glass uh, but after the paint is cured dry um, you can paint the interior roof uh, the interior color and then paint the battery on the inner fender well uh, black with steel posts and red caps. Then paint the windshield visors interior color and the heater core um, semi gloss black. Now mount the rear view mirror in the tab between the visors and attach the overhead light in the inner roof and then mount the heater core to the outer firewall. For the glass, use a little bit of clear part cement or white glue on the corners of the windows to hold the glass in place and then run a bead. Uh, around the glass to um, make sure that it stays in place. Just do one at a time and kind of let it cure so not to disturb it when working on the others. And when it's dry and cured you can use a toothpick to remove uh, any excess cement that was on the glass. Once your glass is dry uh, the body interior and chassis can be put together so uh, with the body upside down you just slide the chassis tub all the way into the back and then uh, kind of drop it down spreading the uh, rockers out a little bit uh, shoehorn that uh, body and chassis together. So then you get a choice of the master cylinder either uh, with a power booster or without just like the real cars did. So I um, uh, you have your option here, but uh, as this car has some pretty upgraded brakes for its time period uh, with dual discs, uh, I used the uh, one with the booster um, as opposed to this one without the, the booster and manual brakes. So uh, it's your choice. Use either either as you see fit. Now we'll get these parts out of the kit to work on the uh, engine bay. Uh, and there's some uh, pretty delicate things here, so make sure you remove those carefully from the sprue tree. So paint paint the uh, uh, steering gear and the shaft flat black, and the radiator wall and fan shroud flat black, and the radiator is aluminum. Then paint the upper and lower hoses flat black with silver ends, and the heater hose is red. Then paint the cap on the clear bottle black. Now. The master cylinder uh, that you chose is uh, steel with a gold upper top uh, and the power booster is black. Now attach the steering box to the frame and the lower hole in the firewall and attach the master cylinder to the firewall and on the radiator wall add the fan shroud and clear bottle. Now attach the heater hoses to the firewall and the motor and attach the upper and lower radiator hoses into place. I wanted to personalize my custom wagon so I printed out my logo as a decal on some plain white paper with a color inkjet printer and then uh, I covered it up with some gloss tape after sizing it and uh, made it available for uh, license tags for my car. These are the parts that you'll use to uh, assemble the front end so get those uh, together now and we'll work on that next. Now we'll assemble the front end and I used a um, what we call black wash which is about a 50-50 um, black paint to a thinner ratio and uh, I uh, used that to highlight the grill area insets. Uh, so then paint the um, signal lamps turn signal yellow and the hood latch is uh, gloss black. Uh, the, then on the hood inside attach the air grills 
and on the front edge the trim strap and then on the radiator wall attach the hood latch. Now on the grill attach the headlights and turn signals and then uh, cut your tag to fit as I mentioned before and glue it into place with some white glue. Um, there's a chrome plate to uh, use as a backing plate you know if you use the decals so apply that to the plate and then glue it into place and attach the assembled grill into the body. So get these parts out to finish up the uh, rear of the body and uh, also uh, the custom plate for the license plate on the back end. Uh, for the clear tail lights paint the top two portions on both lenses stoplight red and then uh, attach the door handle into place and attach the trim strip into place. Attach the lens housings on both sides and glue the lenses um, the red part up into both housings. Now uh, you cut your tag and glue it on to place into place on the rear bumper there with some white glue and there's a chrome plate again to uh, use the decals if you want to apply those so put that decal on the plate and glue that, that into place and then attach the rear bumper to the body. Now get out these final trim pieces uh, handles, wipers, mirrors etc and go ahead and glue those into place remembering to remove uh, scrape off any chrome plating where you're going to use some glue. And you can see here the uh, the door handles and the trim have been uh, attached and then uh, the push knobs to the rear and now attach the uh, the trim to the bottom of both sides as you see and the mirrors uh, on the uh, driver's side door. Now there's a lot of parts in this kit but uh, it is a custom design but there's still a few pieces left over as you can see here and I didn't use all the decals of course uh, but you should be finished with your build. Well there you have it and uh, what do you do like I said with your grandpa's grocery getter? Well you add some flames to it of course uh, and uh, that 396 motor will get you there and back to the store uh, in fine fashion. So this kit um, is great subject matter. A lot of people like the station wagon kits and uh, it'd be nice to get some more stock pieces for it but um, as it is it's just pretty cool. So. Uh, the instructions should maybe have been set up so that you add uh, the painted body later on but overall all the parts fit very well. Uh, the detail is crisp, there's very few mold lines, it's well maintained model. Um, I don't think that even an intermediate skill builder would have any trouble with uh, this kit so uh, buy one and put it on your shelf. Well we hope you like this premium step by step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can always find us on Facebook and at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!